A good friend of my mom's observed when I was reporting about her status the other day that I was stoic about my mom's condition. I insisted I was not. When I hear the term stoic, I think of a large, intimidating older woman, perhaps of German or Slavic descent, <laughs> with a grouchy look on her face and arms crossed. But here's the definition. A person who can endure pain or hardship without showing their feelings or complaining. So I guess I am stoic. Or like most people, I am in little bursts. While I'm talking, explaining, or describing, the alternative is crying in the sugar packets, like I did on my most recent visit to see my mom on Sunday. That little glimmer of recognition is even slighter, if that's possible. She had just been given a hydrocodone to deal with pain in her arm since falling last month. She tried, it seemed, to appreciate having me and the girls there. She laughs at things, which makes her likable among the staff. One of the nurses was going to give her some food from the cafeteria-style brunch buffet, but I saw that the entree choice was breaded veal cutlets. Um, no, she can't have breaded veal cutlets, I blurted. She was a member of PETA and an animal activist for 25 years. She used to give out pamphlets from Farm Sanctuary about how veal is raised. Oh, yeah, I, I don't want that, my mother agreed. Oh, my goodness, that's important to know. We should know that, the nurse replied. I went over to the food area and said, can I please have some rosemary potatoes for my mom? Sure. And I turned around and began to sob uncontrollably over the sugar packets at the drink area of the counter. This woman in a hairnet, hairnet asked if I was OK. Um, yeah? I'm just grieving over the fact that I have to explain to people that the former shell of a woman who used to be my mom was an animal activist and she can't eat veal. Oh, okay. I'll be fine. <laughs> I just miss my mom. I'm pacing myself, you know, with the grief. Okay. I cried for maybe five more minutes, then I took a deep breath, wiped my tears and snot on my upper arm, and walked back to the table. And the visit was over, my stoicism now fully intact. Actually, I cried some more in the car. July 21st, 2012. I decided against buying my mother a birthday gift, other than a small, vibrant purple plant from Trader Joe's cheap floral department, a decadent chocolate-stuffed cupcake, and a Mylar balloon. Sighing heavily as I made my way down the hallway of her institutional state-run nursing home, past the faded 1970s-era framed Jesus, the familiar stale gravy overcooked broccoli urine antiseptic stench greeted me. My mom didn't, though. She's now wheelchair-bound, initially squeamish about walking after being injured in a fall, then perhaps just forgetting she walked. She is alternately gleeful, worried, and terrified about my presence. But tonight, she's just too tired to respond at all. At nearly seven o'clock, she's reclined in that shoddy wheelchair, her eyes closed, but her body tense, like she's pretending to sleep or hiding. She doesn't wear shoes anymore, just oversized socks, and they're caked with floor droppings. She wasn't interested in the cheap purple plant and wouldn't return my touch or gaze, so I left. I haven't visited my mom since then, more than one month, and for that I am both relentlessly guilty and feel as though I'm being harshly judged by both staff and strangers on the street. <laughs> Having emptied out the storage unit in her old condo today, I've been combing through her pared down belongings. Among the treasures is a soft zippered case of jazz and blues CDs, Ella Fitzgerald, Les McCann, Miles Davis, I've never been a fan of either genre, and now the annoying music is a grief trigger. I cried at Zola one night, dancing with friends. It wasn't even jazz, just a woman with vibrato in her voice. <laughs> the music is a manifestation of my mother at her prime. Minutes passed, I don't know how many, and I was just hugging the CD case. What to do with these awful CDs? That was two days ago. 
I took my son's old CD boombox and the zipped up jazz library to the home today and bought a cherry diet Pepsi from the hallway vending machine. I rolled my mother outside, her slippered feet dragging lightly along because I don't know how to navigate a wheelchair. I flash back to when I used to push my twin infants in a double stroller, heaving my purse and diaper bag and usually four other large random objects, opening doors with the right pinky finger and holding them open with my hip. I mouth breathe past the smoking shed in the back cement area that serves as a yard and plug the boombox into an outlet at the end of a small sidewalk and played it. When my, when my mom heard Les McCann, she didn't respond strongly, but looked in the direction of the player and tapped her left foot. I skipped forward a few tracks. God, I hate this music. And she reached down toward the stereo, so I picked it up for her, and she held it in her lap. I won't say that there was recognition or peace, but I can say that her focus changed, or simply that she had focus, and I sat there. I thought about all the hours I spent with Alex, trying to wean him from being nursed to sleep, how I laid on the floor with my arm weaved through a rung on his crib until he was deeply asleep enough to dare move my arm. <laughs> I had nowhere else in the world to be then. Now I had places to be, sure, but not for a while. So I stayed and watched her. She got less nervous and seemed to be relaxed as she closed her eyes. When she seemed to be losing her grip on the stereo, I tried to move it off her lap, but she kept holding on like my toddler with his half-asleep death grip. So I kept a foot beneath the stereo so she wouldn't drop it, and I moved my hand to the handle a few times. Once, she took my hand, not assertively, but still. I held it for about five minutes. I told her I would come back once a week to listen to music with her. I may have lied, but I will go more often. I saw her expression once for about 20 seconds. But then it went back to fog. I cried for about five minutes, spiraling down the, I miss my mommy hole. And the, I took several deep breaths to regain my composure. And as I made the hour long trek home, I actually felt like I did something, even if it was just being there. And it wasn't as heartbreaking as I thought it would be. Except I'm lying again. <laughs> because it is.